pretend I didn't watch your presentation because I was on television. Give me the cliff notes for how you're going to fix FIC. So today's presentation, Alex, was really a response to investors who were saying two things. What's the growth strategy? What's happening with FIC? On growth, we outlined a broad series of initiatives across the firm, identified $5 billion, which has marginal ROEs of 30%. Within that discussion, we also spent a fair bit of time talking about fixed income, our position in the marketplace, what we've done with the business over the last several years, taking resources out of the business, and we identified a billion dollars of a growth opportunity for FIC also as part of the $5 billion collective strategy. Well, let's start with FIC for a second. So if you're looking at net uh, $1 billion FIC revenue over the next three years, to someone like me, that doesn't sound like that much. So one thing that's very core to the discussion today about the whole growth discussion was we made a series of assumptions. One critical assumption is the environment doesn't change. As in low vol, that kind of thing. All aspects of the environment, nothing changes. We felt that was the way to provide our investors with maximum clarity about the impact of these. So we assume nothing in the environment changes, and then we went through business by business, FIC specifically, but also banking, our Marcus lending platform, and identified the revenue opportunities across the next three years. As I said, it totaled to $5 billion, but critically, these are achievable because they grow our client footprint and they're recruited to the firm. And importantly, these are not new. This has really all been underway and there's detailed plans behind all of these. What I have a hard time understanding though is that when you have a VIX say at 11, if the VIX stays at 11 next year and the year after, are we gonna have to be having a very different conversation? Meaning that other banks have been navigating that environment for years and now you guys are starting to turn in that environment. Walk me through what happens in that. So one of the things we went through in the presentation was the difference between us and some of the large universal banks, some of the differences are quite obvious. Two and a half trillion dollar balance sheets versus our $900 billion balance sheet. But again, the underlying assumption is the environment doesn't change. So where's the growth? In fixed income, we identified $600 million that allows us, as we grow market share, to drive revenues. How's that built? By very specific client plans. And as we talked about in the conference, it's well known we're number one with hedge funds, mm -hmm. but we're number three with asset managers, and we're not satisfied with that. It's unacceptable. We can provide lots of value to those clients. I guess what I was kind of getting at is other banks have already made those changes, and I'm really thinking of Morgan Stanley in particular, of course, because they uh, trumped you guys in fix for the last two quarters in terms of trading also. And the question becomes, are they also just better at navigating that new environment, and are they also taking on more risk where maybe you guys aren't? Morgan Stanley's a great firm. I don't know, I don't have you know, any insight into what they're doing. I can only talk about what we're doing as a firm. In FIC, if you step back, and we talked about this at the presentation, the industry went through dramatic growth from 05 mm -hmm. to 2009. In 2009, our market share peaked at 19%. The industry revenues have essentially been cut in half. Our response to that decline was two things. One, we focused on our clients, maintained our presence, but we also took resources out of fixed income. We cut capital, risk-weighted assets by close to 50%. We reduced compensation by 30%. We reduced the balance sheet. We were able to do that during that decline. And what that enabled us to do, Alex, was reallocate capital across the firm, but we also returned $35 billion to shareholders mm -hmm. over the past five years. That's 40% of our market cap. What we created was tremendous operating leverage. And so from here, and hey, if I had $2 billion of revenue opportunities in the current environment, I'd share those with you. But the billion dollars with our operating leverage as part of the $5 billion, it's quite significant. Let's talk about uh, this current quarter because we got different estimates. We got Citi saying that they see FIC down by 15%. Bank of America in a recent interview said, oh, it seems to be holding up pretty well. What's your outlook for this quarter? So what, what I, the question obviously came up at the conference and I said, mm -hmm. A lot of the same market environment characteristics are the same in the third quarter as they have been for the first half of the year. We came into the first half of the year, I would describe the performance as solid. Revenue's up 12%. We expanded pre-tax margin by 340 basis points, but we weren't satisfied with FIC. Now, as I said at the conference, a lot of the market conditions have continued into the third quarter, low volatility. And so in aggregate, the firm's performing well, but FIC remains challenged for us. But you did see Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, you did some volatility in the commodity sector. That has to help you guys. 
Well, on the hurricanes, I, I got to tell you, with, with all the suffering that's going on around Florida and Texas, and I know you feel the same way as I do, it's, it's a little diff difficult to think about the economic uh, opportunities associated with while well, people were sort of sitting down in Florida without power. Um, but obviously, through that entire period, we stayed very focused on our clients and we continue to provide our services. But these are, these are longer term mm -hmm. plans that we're talking about today, not day to day, you know, micro movements. Fair. And your stock is up today on that, uh, to be fair. We're also getting some research notes in KBW, uh, the most recent one that I saw, that say now Goldman has to be a show me stock. How long do you feel like you need to show the street results and what's the criteria for that? So in the $5 billion plan and the, the collection of plans we put out today, what we told the investors was given all the cost saving initiatives we had for the past several years, we didn't expect the cost over the next year to be material. Mm -hmm. Marty Chavez, our CFO, talked to this. But these plans, you'll really begin to see them in years more two and three. These are long term initiatives that are designed to grow the client franchise. And do I look at specifically revenue? Do I look at margin? Do I look at ROE? Like, what's my thing when I look at your earnings? I say, oh, it's working. Well, we wanted to quantify this for everyone. So we basically said $5 billion, 50% marginal margin. We fully allocated out the $28 billion of balance sheet that's associated with these initiatives. And we basically said, nothing else changes. We had 150 basis points to the ROE mm -hmm. just based on these initiatives. Now, we have to execute and we are completely focused and obsessed on executing. You're also obsessed with lending. That was another thing that stood out to me <laughs> as well. So you see uh, growth for FIC at $1 billion, but you see uh, $2 billion for lending, and then it's going to grow to $14 billion by 2020. Where are you going to get all those clients at the end of a credit cycle? So we're very cognizant of where we may be in the credit cycle. We talked about that. Yeah. But initiatives like Marcus provide us with the ability to grow. Two years ago, if we were sitting here having this discussion, we hired Harit and he began to build that business. We wouldn't have known, you and I sitting here, how the reception to that business, that at the end of the year, we should be around $2 billion, that it's one of the fastest growing lending platforms ever launched. And we did that, I wanna be really clear, Alex, we did that in an incredibly controlled, disciplined, Goldman Sachs-like approach. We held it back. In our deposit platform, we've already added $5 billion of deposits and nearly 100,000 new accounts with no marketing. So again, all these initiatives are underway, but for lack of better language, th this is white space for us. And so if we can use technology and the consumer wants to embrace technology, and we can give them a better value proposition, we start from a very small base. You know, we outlined $28 billion of balance sheet in the context of $900 billion. It's small, but very important. Small, but important. But if you see the growth, say, $2 billion versus $1 billion for FIC, for example, it's basically double. Does that mean that lending is your answer to fixing FIC longer term? So we view the firm and performance of the firm as a collective of businesses. We have five businesses at the end of the first half of the year. They're all between 18 and 22 percent, very balanced. FIC, we've outlined the billion dollars. Again, we assume the market environment stays quite challenged. Mm -hmm. No benefit of uh, normalizing interest rates, economic growth, increasing volatility. Certainly, if we saw all, the, all those things, our investors would add a meaningful multiple for that billion dollars, but that's not what we're planning for. Like how much, like a billion you said extra? No, I, I don't know what that market environment would be like if you go back first quarter of 2015, mm -hmm. when the environment was quite quite good for our clients and activity levels were high. We had close to a 15% ROE and we didn't have the operating leverage then that we do now. Mm -hmm. But this, this is not about the tailwinds. Mm -hmm. Marcus, Marcus is a new initiative that allows us to provide differentiated value to consumers. That seems, when we talk with folks like you, that only feels like a departure because we're not a traditional lender. Right. And we would never have been a traditional lender, in my opinion. We're not going to have branches, bricks and mortar. But two really critical things happened. Technology advanced, and the consumer embraced the technology as a way of borrowing. Now, we're small. We'll be at $2 billion by the end of this year. But if these trends continue, we can provide the consumer with tremendous value. What I'm getting at is that you guys handle market risk. 
you're not known for handling credit risk when it comes to loans. So if everyone's looking at your secret sauce and the secret sauce is lending, what are the hidden risks there? So not to debate, but <laughs> I, I, th I actually think we have a pretty good track record on lending risk in addition to market risk. Um, throughout sure. the cycle, but, but throughout like, the cycle, but, um, but bread and brother, bread and butter. Sure, but uh, but uh, general rules, I probably shouldn't argue with you. But I'll say, <laughs> but I'll say this. I'll say this: that the ability to transfer our risk management skills and our technology skills to the consumer is something. It's all about execution. Now, when we got into the consumer marketplace, this I think is the core of your question. Not to be casual about it, we know we don't have consumer expertise. That's why we hired Harrit. That's why we brought in teams of credit specialists and moved them into our risk infrastructure, just like we do in any of our new businesses whenever we build them. So if someone wound up saying to you, are you getting into lending more strongly when the cycle's going to turn? So I would answer that by saying, we've grown our lending footprint meaningfully already. If you went back to 2012, over the last three years, we went from $23 billion of lending balance sheet, we discussed this in the presentation, to $69 billion. If I had sat here then, you might say, wow, Harvey, and it'd be a totally fair question, going from 23 to 69, that feels like a departure. We're a bank now, and we can provide value opportunities across our private wealth platform, our corporate clients, and now the consumer. But we will not take our eye off the risk side of this, which is why we're so patient and disciplined about it. It's part of our culture. We can't do it any other way.